Tape number one. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Explanation of the three fundamental principles by Sheikh Haytham ibn Muhammad Sarhan, teacher in the Prophet's Mosque in Medina. Who is the author of the treatise? He is the scholar of Islam and the reviver of the call to Tawheed in the Arabian Peninsula. Imam Abu Hassan Muhammad ibn Sulaiman ibn Abdul Wahhab at Tamimi. He was born in Dur'iyya in modern day Saudi Arabia, 1115 Hijra, and he died in 1206 Hijra. He initially studied with the elders of his family, who were famous humbly scholars and judges, and then travelled the world to study to further his learning. Why do we study Tawheed? Number 1. Allah has created us in order for us to establish Tawheed in worship. Number 2. Allah does not accept any deeds without Tawheed. Number 3. Paradise has been reserved for the people of Tawheed alone. Number 4. Due to the strength of a person's Tawheed, the reward is increased. Number 5. It is a means for sins to be expiated and forgiven. Number 6. It leads to constant safety, guidance and sweetness of faith. Number 6. Tranquility and happiness in the dunya can only be attained through Tawheed. Number 8. It is a means for the intercession of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Why study this treatise first? Many contemporary scholars of Islam begin studying and teaching such books due to the great benefits they contain. As a result, this treatise has become one of the first which a student of Islam begins his journey of knowledge with. We follow the path of our scholars, so we may reach the rank they have reached in knowledge. Moreover, this treatise is extremely important for the common Muslim due to the fundamental foundations and principles it contains which every Muslim must believe in with certainty, without any doubt. The Books of Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab Number 1. They are easy and clear. Everybody can benefit. Number two, every point is accompanied by proofs. Number three, they are well laid out with clear explanations of each point. And number four, he supplicates for the reader of his books. What are the three fundamental principles? In summary, the three principles are the three questions of the grave. Number one, who is your Lord? Number two, what is your religion? And number three, who is your prophet? By studying, implementing and teaching the three fundamental principles, as well as being patient upon all this, a person will be able to successfully answer the three questions in the grave by the permission of Allah. This treatise is divided into five sections. Number one, four obligations from Surah Al-Asr. Number two, three points regarding Tawheed. Number three, importance of studying Tawheed. Number four, the three fundamental principles. And number five, the conclusion. Section one, the four obligations, Surah Al-Asr. Number one, knowledge. Number two, acting upon knowledge. Number three, calling to the truth. And number four, patience upon hardships. Section two, three points regarding Tawheed. Number one, Tawheed al rububiyya and Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. Number two, Tawheed al uluhiyya Number three, disassociating oneself from shirk and its people. Section three. The importance of studying Tawheed. Allah created us for Tawheed. It is the first obligation. Section 4. The three fundamental principles. They refer to the three questions every person is asked in the grave. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who is your prophet? Section 5. Conclusion. It starts from the saying of the author, after people die, they will be resurrected, 
to the end of the book. First section, four obligations from Surah Al-Asr. The author, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab said, In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy, no, may Allah have mercy on you, that we must to study four matters. First, knowledge. It is the knowledge of Allah, His Prophet, and the religion of Islam with proof. Second, acting upon it. Third, calling to it. Fourth, being patient. Commentary from Sheikh Haytham ibn Muhammad Sarhan. The statement of the author, in the name of Allah. The explanation. Number one, surahs of the Quran begin with the Bismillah and also the letters of the Prophet. Number two, following the example of the Salaf, they would begin their books in the name of Allah. Number three, by beginning with the name of Allah, we seek His blessings. The statement of the author, May Allah have mercy on you. Commentary The author begins with a supplication showing his mercy. Number two, Islam knowledge and da'wah are built upon mercy. The statement of the author, knowledge, it is the knowledge of Allah. Commentary, knowledge is not merely blindly following others, rather it is knowing the truth about Allah, the Prophet and the religion along with the evidences. A person must act upon his knowledge, otherwise he resembles al-Yahud. They had knowledge, however they did not act upon it. Allah informs us that they know of him, meaning Muhammad, like they know their own sons. Verse 146, chapter 2. A scholar who does not act upon his knowledge will be punished before the idol worshippers. The poet said, and the scholar who does not act upon his knowledge will be punished before the idol worshipper. The statement of the author Third, calling to it. Explanation. Conditions for da'wah. Number one, sincerity. Number two, knowledge and insight. Number three, wisdom and patience. Number four, know the people. Say, this is my way. I invite to Allah with insight. I and those who follow me. Exalted is Allah. And I am not of those who associate others with him. Chapter number 12, verse number 108. Say, this is my way. Meaning, the legislation, Quran and the Sunnah that he came with. I invite to Allah. Meaning, my intention is sincere in calling to Allah, not to myself. With insight, meaning, with knowledge knowing the rulings, evidences, and the situation of the people being called. It is as if the author is saying, if you study and do righteous actions, it is upon you to be follow the path of the Prophet and his companions. Say, this is my way. I call to Allah upon insight, I and those who follow me. Thus it is a must to teach. The statement of the author, being patient. Explanation. Linguistic meaning is self-control, discipline and forbearance. Islamic meaning, controlling oneself in three matters. Matters upon obedience to Allah, such as patience upon salah and dao. Patience to stay away from sins, such as being patient when enticed by greed for haram. Number three, patience upon the decree of Allah when facing difficulties such as poverty and ill health. After teaching and inviting others, the author mentions patience, as if he is saying to you, the one who takes the path will come across hardships just like the prophets before us did. So it is a must to observe patience.
Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab said, The proof is the saying of the Most High by the time. People are certainly in loss, except those who believe, do righteous deeds, advise one another to the truth, and advise one another with patience. A Shafi, may Allah have mercy on him, said, If Allah did not send down an evidence to his slave except this surah, it would have been enough for them. Explanation from Sheikh Haytham ibn Muhammad Sarhan After mentioning the four important obligations, the author quotes the proof from the Qur'an, Surah Al-Asr. The author always follows the points with proofs. Why? Number one, to cultivate the student to follow of proofs and evidences, not a blind follower. Number two, so the reader learns the proofs and can advise others by mentioning proofs. Number three, to teach the student how to deduce rulings from proofs based on correct principles. The statement of the author, if Allah did not send down an evidence to his slave except explanation, the intent of Imam al-Shafi, may Allah have mercy on him, is that this surah itself is sufficient to establish as an evidence upon a person to learn, study, do righteous actions and maintaining patience. If this is the case with just one short surah, that it has established the evidence upon us, then how about the rest of the Qur'an which is full of evidences? The author said, Al-Bukhari, may Allah have mercy on him, said, Chapter, Knowledge precedes speech and actions. The proof is the saying of Allah, Know that none is worthy of worship except him, and seek forgiveness for your sins. Thus, Allah mentioned knowledge before speech and actions. Explanation Imam al-Bukhari began one of his chapters in his book As-Sahih al-Bukhari by a chapter heading chapter Knowledge Precedes Speech and Actions. He then mentioned the proof for the chapter which is the saying of Allah Know that none is worthy of worship except him and seek forgiveness for your sins. Thus, it is a must to study before speaking or doing any action. It is not correct to act without knowledge, or otherwise one would be imitating the Christians. Learning and seeking knowledge is a prerequisite for any action and giving da'wah. <laughs>